in early 1968, the Soviet nuclear ballistic missile submarine K-129 went abruptly missing near American waters off the coasts of Hawaii. The Soviets were unable to locate their incredibly powerful machine, but the U.S. Navy did. And with the cooperation of the CIA and billionaire Howard Hughes, they launched Project Azorian to salvage the wreckage, resulting in one of the most impressive naval engineering feats of all time. Still, upon further examination of the remains of K-129, many experts concluded that the Soviet submarine apparently sank while attempting to launch a nuclear strike, an attack that would have dramatically changed the course of history. K-129 In 1968, the tensions of the Cold War were at their highest, and the Vietnam War casualties kept mounting up, while in the continental U.S., anti-war and racial protests were causing civilian unrest. Martin Luther King had just been assassinated, and the U.S. Army and Marines were having a tough time in Vietnam after the massive North Vietnamese Tet Offensive. While the U.S. and its allies were desperately rallying forces to stop their enemy from taking over South Vietnam, the Soviet Navy patrolled the oceans to gather intelligence about the latest American naval operations. One such vessel was the Soviet nuclear ballistic missile submarine K-129. This diesel-electric Project 629 submarine was part of the Soviet Pacific Fleet based at Kamchatka. K-129 was one of the world's most potent underwater machines of her time, although some of her components were quite dated. The submarine was laid down in May of 1958 and underwent modifications in 1964, re-entering service in 1967. She was equipped with a D-4 launch system with three SSN-5 Serb nuclear missiles. Each had a range of over 1,670 kilometers and a one megaton warhead. K-129 was manned by an experienced crew of almost 100 men under veteran Captain Vladimir I. Kobzar and senior assistant Alexander M. Zhuravin. Kobzar was a highly regarded officer and was already being considered to become the commander of the entire Pacific Fleet when the time came. Meanwhile, Zhuravin was also one of the most capable officers in the fleet and was eager to climb up the ranks to prove his value. A submarine goes missing. In February of 1968, K-129 was tasked with her third patrol and the top secret mission was expected to be completed by May 5th. It's believed that the objective was to gather intelligence about American underwater listening posts in the Pacific. When the submarine departed on February 24th, it reached deep water, performed a test dive, and returned to the surface to check if everything was in order. K-129 then radioed the command post, relaying that everything was fine, and proceeded with the mission. As the submarine reached the 180th meridian and arrived at the patrol area, the crew made radio contact again. It would be the last time that K-129 radioed the headquarters. Almost a month after K-129 had departed, the Kamchatka headquarters became highly concerned. She had missed two radio check-ins and was ordered to break the radio silence. However, no response ever came back. Consequently, the Soviets concluded that K-129 had gone missing and immediately began assembling a search and rescue operation with air, surface, and underwater assets. The U.S. intelligence noticed the Soviet movements in the Pacific and attributed it to a submarine loss. They then requested a sound surveillance system, or SOSIS, to the naval facilities in the area to review acoustic records for any anomalies. Meanwhile, the Soviets did not find any trace of the submarine, called off the operation, and deemed K-129 lost with all hands. It was now the perfect opportunity for the U.S. Navy to try and find the remains of the lost Soviet submarine, and SOSIS suddenly detected a bang that could only be attributed to a submarine near Hawaii. The USS Halibut submarine was tasked with going after it. The top secret search operation was codenamed Sand Dollar, and it would prove to be incredibly successful. Project Azorian. For months, USS Halibut scanned the ocean floor of the targeted area using state-of-the-art sonar and eventually found the wreckage in August of 1968. The K-129 remnants were found 2,500 kilometers away from Hawaii at a depth of 4,900 meters. As Halibut surveyed the entire zone, thousands of high-quality pictures were taken, 
to analyze the state of K-129 and how much of her was still intact. Naval intelligence then decided that it would be a good idea to attempt to recover one of the Soviet SSN-5 served nuclear missiles, or at the very least, scavenge the wreckage for Soviet codebooks or sub-technology. Recognizing the value of recovering Soviet assets, the Central Intelligence Agency agreed to lead the recovery operation with support from the Department of Defense. The CIA engineers were in for a colossal task, as lifting a 2,700-ton and 100-meter-long submarine from the depths of the ocean was not going to be easy. Thus began Operation Azorian, whose primary objective was to find the most effective way to recover most of the remains of K-129. In 1970, Secretary of Defense Melvin Laird and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger convinced President Richard Nixon to fund the top-secret recovery attempt. By then, CIA engineers had concluded that the only feasible approach to recover the submarine was to, in the agency's own words, quote, use a large mechanical claw to grasp the hull and a heavy-duty hydraulic system mounted on a surface ship to lift it. To build this mechanical wonder, the CIA contacted billionaire Howard Hughes in 1972 to join the project and provide his own ideas for the machine. Hughes, who had already worked with the government before World War II as part of his breathtaking aircraft achievements, immediately accepted. The ship would be called the Hughes Glomar Explorer, and it would be built by Sun Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company and Hughes' own Global Marine Development Incorporated. Hughes was to direct the project, and its cost was estimated at about $350 million, roughly $1.4 billion in today's currency. To cover up the fundamental objective behind the Glomar Explorer, Hughes told the media that the ship's purpose was to extract manganese nodules from the ocean floor and conduct basic marine research at extreme ocean depths. It took four long years to build the Glomar Explorer, and the end result was a gigantic ship that included a mixture of assets from other vessels. According to the CIA's description of the huge Glomar Explorer, it, quote, included a derrick similar to an oil drilling rig, a pipe transfer crane, two tall docking legs, a huge claw-like capture vehicle, a center docking well called the Moon Pool, large enough to contain the hoisted portion of the sub, and doors to open and close the well's floor. The vehicle was secretly built and loaded into the ship from a submerged barge underneath. With such capabilities, the Glomar would be able to conduct the entire operation underwater, and it was then scheduled for June of 1974. Unfortunately for the CIA and Hughes, the operation's secrecy was compromised when, weeks before sailing, thieves broke into Hughes's office and stole documents linking him to the CIA. Race Against Time Rumors soon started to circulate, and journalists were eager to uncover the story. Still, the Glomar Explorer sailed from Long Beach, California, as planned, on June 20, 1974. The deep-sea drill ship platform arrived at the recovery site on July 4th and stayed there for over a month. Two Soviet Navy ships ventured close to the vessel during these days, but did not figure out her purpose. The recovery was conducted as planned. However, when the submarine was being lifted, she suddenly broke apart. One portion fell to the depths of the ocean, but the capture claw managed to successfully retrieve the other half. Although the CIA did not find the desired code books, it recovered two of the three nuclear torpedoes the submarine was carrying and the bodies of six Soviet sailors. The missing nuclear device was never found. The agency attempted a subsequent operation to recover the other half, but continuous leaks prevented it from happening, as the desperate search for the stolen documents drew a lot of attention. In early 1975, the Los Angeles Times published an account of Project Azorian and its links to the Glomar Explorer, Hughes, and the CIA, prompting the White House to cancel the second operation. The CIA neither confirmed nor denied the stories around the project. In 1992, then-CIA Director Robert Gates presented declassified footage of the burial ceremony of the six Soviet submariners that were found during the salvage operation. And during the following years, the CIA delivered more images, information, and materials recovered from the wreckage of K-129 to the Russian government. Still, despite the goodwill gestures, many Russian officers believed that the Americans were playing nice to continue uncovering the actual fate of K-129 and that it might have been sunk by the U.S. Navy itself. As years went by, 
Crazy theories about Project Azorian kept circulating, the most dramatic one being related to the submarine's missing nuclear missile. Several experts claim that the Soviet submarine sank while attempting to launch the nuclear device to an unknown location in the Pacific, which would have likely started a Third World War. However, the true story remains incomplete, and both the CIA and Russia still have classified material about the submarine and the salvage operation. For the time being, no one knows for sure where the missing nuclear device is. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the history of the Soviet submarine that could have set the stage for another global war.